Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's discussion, we will be discussing about deep sea physiology. Deep sea physiology will be discussed under two things that is hyperbarism and disbarism. First of all, what is hyperbarism? So whenever any person is going towards the deep sea, what will happen to the pressures outside him? The pressures outside him is going to increase a lot. That will cause some deleterious effects on the body which is called as hyperbarism effects. Then sometimes what happens, the person is in underwater and suddenly he rapidly ascends to the upper environment. What will happen? The compressed air will form some bubbles and they will cause some deleterious effects to the body which is referred as disbarism or decompression sickness. So first let's try to understand what happens when the person goes underwater or below the sea. Whenever the person is descending, the barometric pressure starts to increase and as and when the person goes 33 feet or around 10 meters, there will be an addition of one atmospheric pressure. So one atmospheric pressure will be added. So what will be the total pressure? Above the sea level, there is already one atmospheric pressure. So at the level of 10 meters itself, the person will be exposed to two atmospheric pressure. As and when he descends 33 feet more, again one more atmosphere will be added and again for every 33 feet one more atmosphere pressure is going to be added. So what will happen to the gases? Now all these gases will be in a compressed state because of the increased pressure and we know that volume is inversely proportional to the pressure from Boyle's law. As and when the pressure increases the volume of gases is going to be compressed and this is going to cause some deleterious effect. So all of us know that there is will be an increase in partial pressure of the nitrogen which is the most abundant gas and there will be an increase in partial pressure of oxygen and there will be an increase in partial pressure of carbon dioxide also. So all of them are going to cause some deleterious effects. Both O2 and CO2 is going to cause the toxicity. And what N2 will cause? This N2 is also causing some type of toxicity which is called as NAR. Narcosis. So let's deal with them in detail. So first coming to the nitrogen narcosis, the effect due to increased partial pressure of nitrogen. The first symptoms of narcosis starts at 120 feet itself. The person will start to behave some joviality, like he will be very happy whenever he goes down. This effect, the person might be happy, but it is very dangerous for his life itself. So as and when he goes beyond 250 feet, what will happen is there will be severe nitrogen narcosis. This severe nitrogen narcosis will be very similar to that of an alcohol intoxication. So the person is actually in a state of intoxicated state because of this nitrogen. Actually he is not drinking alcohol but this nitrogen is producing a similar effect to that of an alcohol intoxication. How does this nitrogen produce that effect? The nitrogen usually they dissolve in fatty substances. And all the neuronal membranes are usually having the fatty substances. So the nitrogen will dissolve in them and they will alter the ionic conductance. So the nervous system entire ionic conductance is affected. So the ionic conductance in the nervous system is affected leading on to the reduction in neuronal excitability. The neuronal excitability is going to come down which similar to that of an alcohol intoxication effect is seen. This effect is also called as Martini's effect. Like the person is taking a Martini shot. For every 20 to 30 feet he is going down, he is going to behave like as if he is taking one more Martini shots. And finally what will happen? The person will might die. And that's why this nitrogen narcosis is also called as raptures of death. So these are the other names for nitrogen narcosis and nitrogen narcosis is very very dangerous for the life of the person. Now coming to the oxygen toxicity, all of us might think oxygen whenever it is available in excess it is going to be benefit, no. If it is given under high pressure what will happen is, let's see the effects. So whenever oxygen is given under high pressure, the dissolved form, the dissolved O2, the dissolved form of O2 is going to increase a lot. Whenever the dissolved form of oxygen increases a lot, what it can do is they will cause a membranal damage leading on to the production of free radicals. Now oxygen is available under high pressure and they are going to generate more and more free radicals. 
and these free radicals is very very dangerous for all the membrane because they will oxidize the PUFA that is polyunsaturated fatty acids in all the cell membrane and basically it is going to affect all the cell membranes in the body and they also destroy the cellular metabolic system the entire metabolic systems inside the cell will be destroyed because of this free radicals naturally also free radicals are produced but our body has a good system to evade this free radicals out of the body but right now more and more free radicals are produced so the natural system cannot eliminate that much amount of free radicals and they are going to produce their toxic effect and the symptoms will include nausea vomiting dizziness disorientation visual disturbances and finally the person's neuronal system or the nervous system will be severely affected and it will cause seizures followed by the coma these are the acute effects of oxygen toxicity then there is something called as chronic oxygen toxicity when the high pressure oxygen is exposed for a longer duration what will happen is they are going to primarily affect the pulmonary system what they will do is they will cause lung passageway congestion pulmonary edema and atelectasis why these events are happening because lung is the first organ which is facing this high partial pressure of oxygen which leads on to all this deleterious effect in the lung tissue now coming on to the third event that is carbon dioxide toxicity as in when the carbon dioxide level increases all of us know the respiratory system will be stimulated but this stimulation happens till the carbon dioxide levels of 80 mm of he as in when the levels of pco2 goes beyond 80 mm of he what happens is there is respiratory depression now coming to the second part of this lecture that is whenever the person is rapidly ascending to the surface what will happen it will cause a disease called as decompression sickness this decompression sickness can be asked in various other names let's see the other names it is also called as bends compressed air sickness caisson's disease diverse paralysis then dysbarism any of this can be there in the option or any of this can be asked as a question for mbbs examination all these terms are similar to the decompression sickness which happens due to rapid ascent rapid ascent what will happen the dissolved nitrogen will form bubbles why nitrogen other gases also can form it but nitrogen quantity is more in comparison with the other gases so the formation of nitrogen bubbles is also more so they can block any blood vessel they can block literally any blood vessels in the body causing tissue ischemia and whenever they are causing pain in the joints as well as the muscles this is referred as bends and they can block the pulmonary capillaries also and this blocking can cause the respiratory arrest also severe respiratory breathing troubles can be there in the person leading on to condition called as chokes then it can affect the nervous system also leading on to dizziness and unconsciousness so all these are the deleterious effects of ascending rapidly whenever the person is going under water also there is severe deleterious effect and whenever he is rapidly ascending also there is severe deleterious effect so what could be the options for it all of us know uh, nowadays we have good devices so that the person can do work under water or explore the underwater world and that device is called a scuba which is self contained underwater breathing device so this is nothing but self contained underwater breathing apparatus for the decompression sickness there are special methods to avoid this nitrogen bubble formation ideally there so there is something called as decompression tables this is used by the navy officers and navy seals wherein they spend specific time for example the person is under 250 meters what will happen is then he will ascend some like around 200 meters and he will spend some 2 to 3 hours at this level then naturally he will ascend to a higher level and spend at most 1 and 1/2 hours to 1 hour at that level then the ascent will be done very slowly so that there is not much of nitrogen bubble formation all of a sudden otherwise if he ascends rapidly then there are some specialized decompression tanks which is pressurized and these pressures will be gradually reduced so that the incidence of nitrogen bubble formation is reduced now coming to the take home points what happens during descent nitrogen narcosis is happening 
and seizures due to oxygen toxicity can happen and respiratory depression due to the carbon dioxide toxicity and what happens during rapid ascent it is called as Kaysons disease and we have seen all the features due to the blockage of the vessels I hope it's clear thank you for listening it has been an immense support from all of you for the entire respiratory system lecture series as well as the explain why series this video brings us to the end of respiratory system if you have any doubts of, with regards to respiratory system kindly drop in the comment section i'll be very happy to help you out and make a video on it and we'll see in the next chapters hoping to have great support from you thank you